Welcome to Lesson 6. This lesson we're going to learn about the various devices that operate at layers 1, 2, and 3 of the OSI reference model. Those layers being your physical, data link, and networking layers. We'll also learn what type of addressing is utilized within layer 2 and layer 3, and how layer 2 is able to tie or map its address to a layer 3 address for transmission. Following that, we'll learn about ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol, and what the table of that would look like. Later, we'll take a step-by-step -step process on packet delivery, discovering and learning how the packet is actually able to set up a connection over 22 steps. This will really drive home the concepts that we've already learned. Later, we'll talk about the various functions of a default gateway and what it is used for, and some commonly used tools to help verify um, connection between two hosts that are on separate networks. So let's take a look. Layer 1 is only responsible for carrying an electrical signal from one device to the next device, and therefore they do not require any kind of intelligence. So devices that operate within Layer 1 include Ethernet and serial cables. You also have some equipment, such as a repeater or a hub. Now repeaters and hubs are considered Layer 1 because there's no intelligence associated with them. They just regenerate the signal and then pass it along. They don't have any kind of processing information or can make any kind of intelligent decision based upon source and destination. Likewise, your network interface card operates within layer 1, but it has some intelligence and therefore the network interface card is also considered to operate partly within layer 2. Now layer 2, or your data link layer, is responsible for formatting data so that it can be transmitted, and it's also responsible for having an address so that two different devices on a network know how to get from point A to point B. Common devices that operate here include your network interface card. Remember your network interface card also partly operates within layer 1 as well. Another device is the bridge, followed by the layer 2 or workgroup switch. Now bridges have kind of become obsolete, as switches provide the same operation with added functionality. The data link layer utilizes something called a MAC address to assign devices an address. This MAC address is a 48-bit long address that's written out in hexadecimal that's separated by colons. Now, the reason a MAC address came about was because early networking, you had various protocols that operated within the network layer that were considered to be a NOS, or network operating system. These NOSs were very proprietary, meaning that if you had one from NetWare and one from OSI, for instance, they could not communicate with one another. So a MAC address was designed so that different network operating systems could communicate with one another still by utilizing the layer 2 address. 